topic of this video is you want to think for yourself. So I'm out here in the nature again, and there's three things that I can really say that will help you do that. But first, I really wanted to tell a story, all right? I want to just tell a story. Let's pretend this person's name is Tommy Jim, uh, John or something like that, TJ, right? And TJ, let's, let's follow TJ through his entire life. So TJ's born, he's a baby, and he's basically allowed, within reason, to do whatever he wants to. Now this may be crawling around, this may be, uh, you know, using a diaper, you know, shitting yourself or whatever. This may be crying, yelling, screaming, playing with toys, whatever it might be. And you do that for however many years. And then uh, all of a sudden, you are thrust into, for many of us, like a preschool. And all of a sudden, this preschool has rules and you need a pass to go to, you know, the, ba the bathroom or something like that. And you never had that this before, right? You could just do whatever you wanted to. You didn't have to ask anybody to go to the bathroom. You just went to the bathroom. And then fast forward, go to kindergarten, the same thing, and you're forced to take a nap, maybe if, even if you don't want to. You fast forward, you're in elementary school now. Let's go use the shade. And you want to go to the bathroom, but you got to get a hall pass. Or you're starting to be told, you know, in kindergarten, you're allowed to like kind of draw and, and have art time and, and your, your nap and all that kind of stuff. And you're, kind of being taught the alphabet, which obviously is a good thing. But then you're in this school where they're trying to conform you and they're taking away all of your thoughts, right? They're trying to turn you into a cog for the system. Not trying, they, they do it very successfully to turn you into a cog for the system. And once you're a cog for the system, you don't think for yourself anymore. And this keeps happening through your schooling and it just keeps going on and on and it happens at such a subtle rate too that you don't really realize that it's actually happening so you don't really say anything about it you don't really do anything about it it's just the way things are all right so we've kind of painted a little picture here you're a little tj you uh, started off as a baby you could do whatever it is that you wanted to do in life and now all of a sudden you're being thrust into like preschool or whatever they might call it these days and all of a sudden you've got these restraints put on you. They're not too heavy, right? Because so, it, it's a gradual thing. It's a 12 step program, or maybe 13 or 14, depending on where you started off in school, depending on maybe if you went to pre-preschool, it really just depends on your situation, maybe even your financial status and all those things. So you start off and you can do whatever you want to. You can crawl around, you can play, you can throw things, you can shit your pants, you can, you know, pee your pants, you can do whatever you want to. You've got the, you've got the life. Your mom takes care of you most of the time. And, you know, like, it's just, you cry, you get food, everything's kind of handed to you. And all of a sudden, you are, I don't know what preschool starts off at, maybe five years old, and you're, you're in preschool and you're like, all, all of a sudden, like, there's these restrictions, but they're slight. You still have your art, you still can kind of do what you want to, you have your nap time. Then you move into kindergarten, and all of a sudden, there's a little more restrictions, but it's kind of light. First, second grade kind of go like this, and all of a sudden, third grade, it starts changing a little bit. In fourth grade, it starts changing a little more. By the time you know it, you're in seventh grade, all of a sudden, you don't have recess anymore, you can't really go outside and get your angst out you have to ask to go to the bathroom at least when i was going to school maybe it's not like that anymore and all of the all of the what do you want to do with your life kind of think has gone out the window you start thinking about what college you're going to go to and how further you know they're going to control you and, and everything like that and there's no real thought process of your own you've got to ask to do this you got to ask to do this you uh really your your own thoughts they might matter in certain classes but for the most part it, it really doesn't matter you are just taught to, you know, be a cog in the system. And then you get to high school and it's even more restriction, right? And you're probably working a job maybe on top of it or something like that. And you've got all these proce processes you got to go through. Just molding you into being plugged into the system, not really thinking for yourself. And then you get put into college if you go to college. And college is extreme these days. College kind of used to be used to go to school to do what it is that you want to do. But now 
they're just forming you into even more of a cog of what, what you are in the system. And by the time you are out on your own, you don't even know who you are because you've been asking these people. And another thing that's even worse is during this whole period now, something I didn't have to think about when I was going to high school because I'm a senior citizen, social media. You know, you're watching these reels and asking, you know, watching people that are living the kind of life that they want to live. And you you're asking them how they did it. And it, it, you know, it, none of this is your own thoughts. You're just even more plugged into another system. So not only do you have this hierarchy of the, the school that you went to, you got the hierarchy of the fake, you know, social media, you know, everything's fake on social media for the most part. I'm like, there's some of us real people out there, but there's so few of us who are real. You got all this fake stuff, especially for the women out there. These women who, you know, if you see them in real life, they look nothing like their pictures, but you got to live up to these ideals. And what did you do to get to this? And what did you get to, to get to that? If you want to be an athletic person and you're built like me, but you're lock, watching a skin, skinny person or whatever, it's not going to relate, but you're trying to relate to this. So you don't really have your own thoughts anymore. You don't really know who you are. So you just start asking other people who you are because you can't ask yourself because you don't know who you are anymore because you've asked so many people and you've been told this and told that. You know, if you really think back to at least when I was in, I don't know, first grade, kindergarten, second grade, sometimes third grade, you were, you were put in these art classes and you were put in these different classes to kind of just let it all out, really. I, like, I don't like the term express yourself because that's kind of like a Freudian thing. I think it was Freud or one of those psychologists, and he even said that it was misused. So I don't really like the term express yourself, but you've, you've got these things that you did to really make just to get it out there, you know, like get what, it, you know, you could draw whatever you wanted to. It might look as crazy or psychotic as, as you, you would you would want it to be. And everybody's just like, you know, always in this cute, right? Not, not that I say it like it should be psychotic art that you're doing or anything like that, but, but you had like a voice. Not that you don't have a voice now, but there are some people who go through this whole process, this whole 12 step pro program that you're supposed to go to and they didn't care about any of it. That's, uh, you know, somebody like me, but at the same time, I didn't care about any of it, but I also didn't care enough to figure out what it is that I wanted to do. When I used to talk to different uh, counselors and stuff like that. I always just told them, I'm like, look, I just want to talk into a microphone and stuff like that. I don't want to do any of this hard labor. But most of my life, I did hard labor. Most of my life, I did sales, which I'm good at. But I, you know, just because you're good at something doesn't mean you want to do it. Just because I could go lift whatever I could at these physical jobs didn't mean I wanted to do it. Just because I lifted at the gym didn't mean I want to lift it all day at work. But I kept going and doing it because that's all I had. And that leads us to why, why you know, this is, this is why this happens. People don't realize it. It happens at such a slow rate, right? You're, you're, all of a sudden you go from a toddler to you're in school and everybody's telling you what to do. And one of the reasons for this is because a lot of us are not taught about God. You know, I, I know it's a, a, a divisive topic these these days. Not everybody wants to talk about it, but if you really ask God, God will give you your purpose. God, you will know what you're good at. You, everybody knows what they're good at. Everybody tries to defend what they're good at because they're good at it. And other people are like, no, go do this instead. Go do this instead. Like one of the things that I, uh, one of the people, the examples that I have is uh, Crit Kit and Krista, if you are into video games at all, they used to work at Nintendo of America, but they were in San Francisco and they were like a marketing team. And Krista, her parents, you know, she's Asian and her parents wanted her to be a doctor, lawyer, whatever, you know, these high paying jobs. And she didn't want to do that. She wanted to work in video game design or video games and she did it, right? And that is what you have to have. It, you, you, just because these people gave birth to you doesn't mean that you have to do what they want you to do, especially if you don't like what they're doing. They might like what they're doing. They might not like what they're doing, especially if they don't like what they're doing. Don't listen to what they're doing. Don't listen to what they're saying. Why would you want to go live a life based on people's opinions who don't even like what they're, they're doing with their own self? It doesn't make any sense. I'm going to get to the three things that I really think that you should do. And it, it's, it's a long process. I'm not going to say that this isn't a long process. I'm not going to say that this is just, you know, things are going to happen tomorrow. It could, it could, it really could, but it might not. 
right? And so I don't want to set anybody up for failure. I don't want anybody having expectations that you shouldn't have because whatever age you're at, say you're 25, you've got 25 years of this embedded in you. So it might, it's not gonna take 25 years to get rid of it, but it might take, I don't know, a couple months or whatever. It might not. Now there is going to be challenges before I get started with these three. Right? Sorry, I feel like an infomercial. There is gonna be three, or there's gonna be challenges with these three things because people are used to you being a certain way and it, once you change that certain way, they're gonna have a hard time with the new you. And so you're really gonna have to break through that. You're gonna have to realize that some people might not come in with you into this new life of yours. Some people might, some people might complain about it. It's just like when I was losing most of the weight, people were fighting me like, oh, you look fine when you're bigger, just because they were bigger. They didn't want me to lose the weight. So you're going to come into almost competition for what did you want to actually do. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go kind of descending. So number three is identify and, cha uh, and challenge social norms. Now, I'm going to use David Hawkins for this a little bit. Challenging this, I think one of the best things to do is write something down and notice what energy you have, to have towards it. If you're thinking about a job or if you're thinking about a career or if you're thinking about a person or if you're thinking about a situation or a so social event or whatever it is, write it down and watch if it's really, if it's like you're really apprehensive about writing it down, you don't like the energy coming off it or if you do. I shouldn't start off with the negative. If you do like the energy going towards it, if you do like the, the way it makes you feel, then that is something that you want to keep in this thing. And get like a notebook, maybe one of these little notebooks like this, you know, like the paper I ripped this off. I would suggest getting a bigger notebook because this couldn't, can actually be a long process. Okay, so now that you started doing this, now that you've started writing this stuff down, once you get the ones, it could be a whole host of things. And I'm, I'm really big on uh, paper and pen just because it's very permanent. I don't like using pencil because you can erase it. You need to be able to see which ones really didn't jive with you and write that down, cross them out, do something. Make sure that you know that these things didn't jive with you. Even looking at these things did not flow well with you at all. Even pray about it. That's another thing. Some of these, just pray about it. Sit there, meditate on it, pray about it, ask God about it. What one of these things should you be doing? Why should you be doing it? And every other thing that you can possibly think of. This is a very good process to do. Take your time with it, especially if it's something that's going to be kind of life-changing, something that is going to be permanent in your life, something that's going to really stick, okay? Spend a lot more time on that, but get a notebook. Get a notebook and a pen. Don't use pencil with this. Again, you really wanna see where that negative energy was, where that positive energy was, and then take the ones that were positive and write them on another piece of paper and see how you feel about these and just narrow things down like this. And one of the worst things that you could do is let anybody see this notebook. Don't let anybody see it. Keep this notebook private, even if you gotta keep it locked up, don't let anybody see it because as soon as you, and don't talk about it either. As soon as you start talking about things, the sooner you have to start defending things and the sooner you don't wanna do these things. Think about how this has happened in the past. Maybe you were in high school and you wanted to do a certain thing and your parents were completely against it. And you would have done it Right, I mean, I'm not talking about hurting people. I'm not talking about any, any extenuating or terrible circumstance. I'm just talking about normal things. Maybe there was a club that you wanted to join and you think it could have helped the rest of your life and your parents weren't really into it, so you didn't do it. Or whoever, your, kid, your friends, right? They weren't into it and so you didn't do it. Don't tell anybody about any of this until it's done. Like most successful people don't tell people about what they're doing until they're done doing it. And it's already building traction, it's got success. And then those people who would have told them not to do it, they'll start joining in, right? It's, it's, it's just the way of the world. So do this, do these steps, write this stuff down, use that power versus force. I, did, I, I mentioned David Hawkins, I didn't even <laughs> mention why. He had this thing called power versus force where you can hold an item or a, a thing or whatever, and if you get a, a stronger response from holding that item, then it's something that should be in your life, all right? So maybe even hold, this, this piece of paper, once you write these really positive ones on there, hold that piece of paper and maybe see if it makes you stronger. All right, so number two 
is going to be develop critical thinking skills. Developing critical thinking skills is something that you're not taught in school at all. You might have been taught this somewhat in, in college or university, whatever you want to call it. Probably not. Most of the time they want to strip you of critical thinking. They want to, you know, just embed whatever it is that they want you to be doing. And so they kind of rob you of that. You had critical thinking when you were a kid. You probably don't have critical thinking when you're an adult, right? You don't have that critical thinking skill anymore. You don't have what it is that you need to really go over things. So this is where prayer comes in. I know I've mentioned God a lot. If you don't like that, you know, I don't know what to tell you. Meditate, do whatever it is, call it whatever you need to, which I actually hate saying. Call it whatever you need to just to get through your day. But by and large, this is going to be a huge skill that you really need. After you use that power versus force and really see what it is that you want to do with the situation that you are trying to figure out, you have to say, is this achievable in my current state? I don't know, an odd example is uh, maybe you want to buy a Lamborghini and you feel real positive about this Lamborghini or something like that or you want to have like a million subscribers on YouTube but you've never shot a video before. You don't really have the critical skills needed to do that, right? Or you don't have the money in the bank or the, you know, like maybe you want to buy a Lamborghini because of your YouTube success because you've got a couple million subscribers. Maybe that's your goal. You don't have the skills needed yet to get there. So you're going to have to start off. It's probably best to start off with your yourself, your smartphone and just start making videos and developing those skills that you actually need. And I'm not saying to not shoot for that, right? I'm not saying that at all. Once you get that positive reinforcement from yourself and that, you know, that power versus force and you know what it is that you're really looking to do, you really have to figure out what those skills are. You know, intelligent people are like, and successful, I should say, people, they buy skills, they don't buy entertainment. They'll buy skills. They'll go out and get those skills that they need to get the job done, or they'll go figure out those skills. If you're somebody who's disciplined, it's well known that when you pay for something, you're much more likely to do things with it than if it's free. So I'm not saying videos on YouTube teaching you how to do what you want to do aren't good, but by and large, most of the people who don't pay for something are not going to do the skill that they are setting out to do. I mean, like for an example, learning Japanese is something that I've always wanted to do. I only paid for it one time and I still remember those lessons, but I don't remember any of the other free stuff that I did at all. So that's an example of that. Once you <clears throat> figure out what it is, now this might be a relationship and you might, you might not even have the skills for that. I don't know. You might really have to figure that one out. But when we're talking career or things that you want to do with your life, uh, you know, we're talking really the idea of having a purpose in something that is going to be uh, developing skills. Now you might have had those skills developed your entire way through school and you might already have them. And the number one and probably the most important and probably the hardest to do is to practice self-reflection. That is the number one skill that I think you need. You need to reflect on situations in your life previously. How did you react to them? How could you have done it better? You cannot do, I know there's this uh, Neville Goddard who talks about you can go revisualize the situation and change it. Maybe that's possible with quantum physics, I don't know. But right now, reflect on what it is that you want to do, how you've done, dealt with things in the past, how you think you'll deal with things in the future, and how doing what you're doing right now will affect that. Now, the number one way to do this, again, is prayer and meditation. Sit, just sit there. Everybody wants to stare at a screen and have the screen tell them what to do, kind of like you're watching this video, but I am not telling you what to do. I'm just telling you what has worked for me in the past. Now, is this the only way to, to get this stuff done? Probably not, but I think it's some of the easiest ways to do it, right? So Self-reflection is very important. How did you handle the situations in the past? How do you think you'll handle it in the future? But the only place you can live is right now. So you can only write this stuff down. You can only visualize what it is that you want to do. You can only get that power versus force, get that energy on what you want to do in the future. And you can only write that stuff down, but what you do right now is going to be what you're doing and like build towards what you're doing in the future. So if you want to start a YouTube channel and you're just playing video games every day, all day, it's really not gonna, it's really not going to 
reflect that. Unless even, even if you wanna have a video game channel, you're still gonna have to develop the skills of talking on a camera, entertaining a crowd, the kind of videos that you wanna make, and boiling this stuff down. So if you want to create a video game channel, but you're only playing video games and not figuring out the rest of it, how's it gonna happen? If you wanna have this successful channel on whatever it is, but you've never done that, how are you gonna do that? Maybe the channel is getting yourself to that, that place. And then you gotta figure out how to get to that place and the steps that you're gonna use and how you're gonna help people get there. Now, I kind of think this idea of niching down might not be great. Some of the more successful channels that I've watched kind of have like a, a, an overflow of different things on it, but that's really up to you. Really look into what it is that you want to do. And I'm, I'm specifically on YouTube here. It doesn't really matter. Another completely random example of this is I was watching this show where they were trying to find gold in Utah and this guy had a lot of money because he was in like the oil rig industry and he was trying to find gold in Utah, but he knew that he couldn't do a lot of this stuff on his own. So he was hiring other people to do it. And one of the people that he hired was some people, uh, some guy that only knew rock structures. That's it. He knew what rock structures were. He knew what rock structures would be by gold. He knew what rock structures and rock formulas and all, I don't, I don't really know all, any, anything about this, but I'm trying to do my best. He knew what would lead them to gold, what structures, what formulas, what, you know, kind of rock and formations and, you know, valleys and everything would lead them to gold. This guy was an oil rig guy, right? He knows how to rig machines. He does not know how to find gold. So he found a guy that knew how to find rare materials. Like this guy wasn't a gold expert. He was a rock expert. And he, and, and because he's a rock expert and they were in the desert and there's a lot of rock there, he could lead them to where the gold should be. It, any kind of thing, oh, it, it doesn't really matter. I don't need to give a thousand examples. Just figure out what gives you that po positive energy. Maybe it is rocks. Maybe you're so fascinated by rocks. You could be the number one expert in rock formations that lead to gold or whatever other rare mineral or whatever it is, right? And that is what you spend your time doing, not playing video games. If you want to find rocks, playing video games probably is not going to get you where you want to go. Now, can you play video games at the end of the day when after everything's done? Yeah, of course. <clears throat> All right. Now that I've set, sweat three gallons, I think that's the end of the video. But, you know, really think about this stuff. Take what I, I, I've told you to uh, heart. Maybe even meditate on it. See which ones apply to you, which ones don't apply to you. I can't really see the screen, so hopefully I'm actually on screen. At the end of the day, only you can do this for you, right? You, you're not gonna find this on social media. You might be able to find how somebody did it on social media, but again, does that really apply to you? You know, does that really help you out? All right, it's so hot that it actually overheated. I'm not even sure where it cut off, but I just wanted to say, and this isn't a bad thing. This is up to you and it should be up to you because it's you, you know, you're the only one that's going to spend every moment, every second, every millisecond or whatever of, of time with yourself, right? Nobody else is going to do that with you. There's going to be some people that are in your life quite a bit, but they're not going to be there all, all the time. And you know, I think one of the best things in a relationship is each person has a purpose. It doesn't really matter what it is. And it really doesn't even matter what, what it is that you apply these things to. It doesn't have to be a career. It doesn't have to be a relationship. It can be anything. Really start, what do you, I mean, just all right, for, for the last example that I'm gonna give, runaway bride. She ran away from everybody until she realized just I, like a simple thing, like what eggs does she like? And all of a sudden she showed up back up in, in his, his life and they were together again. And I'm assuming, you know, together permanently. The, the faster you do this kind of thing, the faster you're gonna really just be on the right track to get where you are. And I maintain that God has a purpose for us when we, before we even got here, it's written about in the Bible, you have to figure out what that is. And you're going to know what that is. The last piece of advice, that intuition that you have is telling you something for a reason. You might not know the reason, but if you just go and do whatever it's telling you to do, unless it's to harm somebody or unless you're like, I don't know, in psycho meds or, you know, you're in a really psychotic situation. Uh, and I'm not going to speak to that. But if you are in a normal situation, that little voice in your head, 
is telling you what to do for a reason. It's why you're here. What, and it really doesn't even matter what it is. You might just, like, it doesn't matter. Relationships, career, doesn't matter. I had, I was told, my intuition told me to give somebody money the other day. And I didn't know just how much it was going to affect their life. They were able to get an apartment because of it. So you never know what these little things are that are going to, and I don't even like talking about that. I do a lot of stuff like that. I don't like talking about it because it says not to talk about those deeds, uh, but it's an example. You never know what is going to, that little voice, what that little voice is telling you, you never know how it's going to affect somebody or yourself or a bunch of people. It could, something that you do could might, might help hundreds, thousands, millions, billions of people. But unless, and, and the ideas float around, right? So idea is gonna come to you first because your, your thought to have the best, be the best for the job and it might go to somebody else if you just don't do it. Anyways, I, I don't know if I believe that either, but it's possible. That's the video. Comments, what do you think is your best method? Do you like the methods that I uh, just outlined here? And like, subscribe, and I'll talk to you in the next one. <laughs>